Africa Summit. This is a summit that has been holding on uh, uh, from 2014. I think it was an initiative of President Barack Obama. Uh, 2014, uh, uh, African heads of state have been uh, meeting with uh, officials of the United States to discuss uh, trade and other uh, issues. So when you take a look at uh, this uh, partnership uh, between the United States and Africa, uh, from uh, 2014 to now, how? What is your appreciation of uh, this uh, partnership? It gets a C grade, and I explain to you why I say this partnership gets a C grade. Um, Africa, we are dealing about close to three trillion dollar economy. That's an African economy in approximation. That's the economy we are dealing with here. So the United States is not dealing with some. From an economic perspective, they are not dealing with some wiggling power in court. Africa <clears throat> has everything that it takes from a partnership perspective for the United States to benefit. But if you look at what has been happening geopolitically, it's as if the United States has taken a back seat on, in terms of its African agenda. And they've given so much priority, I would say without any doubt, um, justifiably for what is happening in Ukraine. But what this did is they dropped the ball along the line. In doing so, they have shot themselves to the foot. I'm hoping that uh, President Joe Biden, you know, this is a reawakening for him to say, look, it's true that we have a lot of issues going on in Ukraine and the world is you know, trying to see how they can solve that problem between Ukraine and Russia. Africa should not be put at the back burner at the back burner because of that. African issues should still be at the forefront of whatever international development agenda that the United States has, because Africa has always been there for the United States in many ways, shape and form. So the United States cannot take a back seat to African affairs. So I think it is a reawakening that President Joe Biden recognizes the potential of this continent. On the second part, Laurentia, I'm speaking now to my fellow countrymen, Africans. This is where we come to the table as a kingmaker. Because what is Africa should be asking themselves back home is these are leaders are going to the United States. They're going to be in Washington, D.C. with the president. Do they actually have an agenda of what they can present coordinately to the president and said, these are the things that we want. I know, you know, you've read that four-point agenda or five-point agenda that the United States want to talk about. But do they those issues align with what the African <clears throat> with what the African president has as the agenda? They talk about fostering economic agenda, uh, engagement, advancement in peace, which is something that everybody uh, would say it's uh, concerning in Africa. Reinforcement commit, commitment to democracy. Yeah, so. Africans are looking up to their leaders to go there with an agenda that meet the aspiration of the people back home. The United States come to the table with its own interest. Africa should go to the table with its own interest. Africa should not be there to rubber stamp the interest of the United States in these conferences because the United States, it's a gigantic economy. They have their own interest. Nothing wrong with that. Every country has its own interest. So as you're going to the table, African leaders should have as a plan, a coordinated plan, since it's a coordinated plan, uh, summit. Because so far, I've been looking for communiques on this come summit to see if some of them are going to be having a one-on-one -on -one bilateral meeting with uh, President Joe Biden. I haven't come across one. They might be out there. <clears throat> but so far, there's no one-on-one -on -one bilateral meeting that's going to be going on. So it's a coordinated joint effort between the United States and African heads of state. What is the platform on which African heads of state are going in for? A has security as it's concerned, B has economic issues, B, the, D has uh, food insecurity. D, but so what is that common platform on which all of them can present and say, this is our bottom line, Mr. President. If you want to work with us as Africans as a whole, number one, Two, three, four, five. So that is the expectation that a lot of civil society Africans out here are looking for. At the end of the day, the communicator that's going to come out, does it meet the aspirations of the African people? Or do I just there to represent you know, Robert, Robert Stamp, uh, uh, United States interest? Not only that, as I said before, 
geopolitically, things have changed since the last time that they came to Washington, D.C. We've seen what's happening in Russia, <clears throat> I mean, in Ukraine, and we've seen the strategic position of Russia and in Africa. So African leaders should be very careful if the United States is simply bringing them to uh, Washington, D.C. to counteract Russian influence on the continent, or are they actually coming out with an agenda that is going to meet the aspiration of the people? Because we all know that the position of the West, not just the United States, even um, Europe, is threatened in Africa as we speak because of the presence of Russia and the influence of Russia. And a lot of people, Africans have aspirations, and they have the right to take the their own destiny to their own hands. You have to come to the table and say, we are an alternative. The West is an alternative. United States is an alternative. France is an alternative. UK is an alternative. I think if you want to deal with Russia, we can offer an alternative that is more probable, that is more economical, that is better than what Russia is offering. But standing aside and say, no, we want to fight Russia, Russia is doing this in Ukraine, and therefore uh, I dictate to Africans and say, you cannot deal with Russia, you cannot do, do with this. It's not going to fly in the face of Africans anymore. Come to the table what you think you have, come to the table what you think you can offer as an alternative to the African issues, and then Africans will negotiate with you, discuss with you. They always say they're not permanent friends, but permanent interests. So Africans, if you bring something to the table that's going to be much better than what Russia is bringing to the table for Africans right now, of course, African president will be obliged to look at it as an alternative. But simply bringing them to Washington to dictate to them and say, you cannot deal with Russia, you cannot deal with China, you cannot deal with this, it's not going to fly. So that is the expectation that we're expecting out of this conference. Afrique Média, le monde, c'est nous.